Want to know what boards are in my personal quiver and the three boards you need in yours? Well, here's my 2022 quiver breakdown. Hi guys, Chris from Stoke Patrol here. Welcome back to the channel. Now before I get started, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any video goodness. Now today we're going to be talking about my personal surfboard quiver. It's something I get asked a lot about, obviously doing quite a lot of board reviews at the moment. I'm going for a few different boards, so I wanted to keep you updated on the boards that have made the cut into my own personal quiver. And along this is hopefully going to give you a few ideas of boards you can add to yours. And we're going to run through the three different types of board every quiver should have. So yeah, let's jump straight in. Now I'd like to start by pointing out the fact that everyone's quiver is going to be quite different and it's going to depend on a few different variables such as your surf skill level, your style, the waves you're going to be surfing, and of course the board you'd like to ride. Um, so for that in mind I thought I'd run through kind of the specifications for my quiver so you can kind of see whether it's very similar to yours as well. Now for me I'm based in Byron Bay so we've got a huge variety of waves on our doorstep here from reeling points to punchy beach breaks and of course up and down the coast there's a few different breaks to choose from as well and um, so you've got something for every kind of condition. Uh, now for me I'm kind of the higher end of intermediate and generally speaking the kind of chest to head high size waves is generally where I'm at with most of my sessions. Um, so with that in mind let's jump into my personal quiver. So the first board on the list is the Mashup by Firewire. And now for me, this is my daily driver board, the board I'm gonna use for 80% of my surf sessions. And it's the one I always leave in my car when I'm heading out for a session. So if I'm taking a couple of boards, the Mashup is the first one I always load. And it's really good for the conditions around here. I love the speed of the quad fin setup. It's just super fun and playful underfoot. Uh, I've also tested out as a twinny with a trailer as well, and that's really good fun. So there's a lot of versatility built into a single board. Uh, the paddle power, the turnability, everything like that just makes it a great daily driver for me. So yeah, that's the mashup by Firewire. The next board on my list is the Evil Twin by Lost Mayhem Surfboards. And now for me, this is my small wave warrior board. It's just really fun in those kind of smaller conditions from kind of thigh high up to shoulder high, just really super fun. Uh, I ride mine as a twin fin or a twin with a trailer if I'm surfing a bit more on my backhand, but it's just loose, lively underfoot and just turns those smaller mushy days into really fun surf experiences. Uh, so if you're looking for a really good kind of small wave groveler performance board, the Lost Evil Twin is definitely one that should make the cut. And the final board in the kind of short board realm of my quiver is the Album Twinsman, which is my performance twin fin. Uh, obviously this board doesn't need much introduction. Josh Kerr and Asher Pacey absolutely rip on this board. Um, but for me, unfortunately, I don't ride this board as much as I would hope so. Um, it definitely performs better in bigger, punchier, hollow conditions, um, which don't tend to be a lot around here, especially left-handers, which is what I prefer a twin fin. I'm not very good in twin fins on my backhand and being a goofy foot around here, most things are right. So I don't actually get to take this board out as much as I would hope. Uh, obviously, if you're regular and you're surfing right-handers or you're goofy-footed and you've got a lot of left-hand peaks around you, this will be a great board. But unfortunately, it's not a board that I actually use heaps at the moment. Hoping to get some more water time on it soon. If not, I might be swapping out for a kind of another thruster or a quad in that performance realm. Now onto the mid-length side of things. and I've actually got four mid-lengths in my quiver at the moment, uh, so we've got a few to get through. Uh, the first one on the list, though, is the Seaside and Beyond by Firewire. Uh, now, this was originally for me as kind of a performance step-up mid-length. I really love the quad fin setup on this board. There's so much speed and performance packed into it. Um, and despite that kind of more bulky outline towards the front of the board, you've got heaps of paddle power, but loads of performance. So don't be afraid to push this into some bigger surf. And my 6.8 model handles the points really good when they get a little bit more punchy and those punchy beach breaks as well. Um, but yeah, that's the Firewire Seaside and Beyond. So the second of my three mid lengths is the Rincon by McTavish Surfboards, uh, which is a really nice, beautiful single fin mid length. Um, I've got mine in 710, so it acts almost like a mini longboard, which is great. And um, it can handle a huge variety of conditions, but the kind of waist to shoulder high point is where I really love this board. It's got heaps of speed, style and flow. I absolutely love surfing this board. And it's my go to for those kind of smaller clean days, especially when the points are reeling. Mid-length number three is the Sunday by Firewire. So another Firewire mid-length here. Um, I originally got this 6.4, which I got on quite well with as a twin fin setup, but then I ended up getting my hands on a 7.3 model. And I've been absolutely loving this board as a single fin. It's great for when I don't want to take a full longboard out. It's got a little bit more performance and it's just really fun to surf. 
That being said though, the Firewire Sunday is kind of on the cut list at the moment. Since I've got my hands on the McTavish Rincon, I've found there's a lot of overlap between those two boards. I'm actually preferring the Rincon over the Sunday these days. Um, the Sunday as a single fin is a great addition to any quiver, but I will probably be getting rid of that in favor of the Rincon. My fourth and final mid-length in my quiver is the Broken Arrow by Cape Collective Surfboards. And now this is a performance-based mid-length twin fin setup. And it's my go-to board for when everything gets a little bit bigger around here. Uh, it's got a really nice pulled-in nose, really nice long straight rail line, and can handle some bigger conditions. And it's almost my step-up board now. Uh, I really like the twin fin setup on it. I've got some nice keel fins in it, but combined with that really nice long straight rail line, handles really well even on my backhand. It's almost got the drive and the speed of a quad, but as soon as you get it on rail, you've got the release of a twin fin. So yeah, that's the Broken Hour by Cape Collective, a great step up performance mid length. So the final board in my quiver is my longboard. Uh, you can't really surf around Byron Bay area without having a really good longboard in your quiver. And my go-to is the Hyperglide by Cape Collective. Uh, now this is a great longboard, handles a huge variety of conditions, hollower, smaller, it's great fun. Um, now it's originally designed as a two plus one setup, so a bit more of a performance uh, longboard, but I've been riding mine as a single fin uh, for the kind of last year and a half, and it goes absolutely great, and that's my preferred setup in that board now. Uh, now that kind of pulled in, kind of rounded pintail makes it really maneuverable, but it's still got plenty of nose riding ability as well, so the best of both worlds. It's just an all round really fun longboard to ride. So yeah, that's the Cape Collective Hyperglide. Now, if you have any questions about the boards in my quiver, make sure you add them in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them. And of course, now we've gone through my personal quiver, let's talk about the three different types of board you need for yours. So the first type of board we're gonna talk through is gonna be a core part of your quiver, and that is your daily driver. And by daily driver, I mean the board you're gonna reach for for 80% of your surf sessions. So because of that, the term daily driver has a lot of different interpretation, depending on your surf skill level, the waves you're surfing, and of course your style as well. Uh, for me, the Firewire mashup is a great daily driver for me for how I like to surf and the waves I'm surfing. My brother loves his Axod Two Fangs. That's his go-to twin fin daily driver. Uh, my buddy Tom is the Phantom or the Pizalian Two by Pizel. Um, so there's a lot of scope. Obviously, if you're a lower level surfer, something like a Mini Mal would basically become your daily driver. But yeah, the daily driver forms core part of your quiver and is your go-to board. And category number two for a well-rounded quiver has to be the Groveler or Small Wave Performance Board. Uh, obviously we're dealing with nature as surfers and nature doesn't always deliver. There are gonna be those days which aren't great, but you're still gonna want to jump in for a surf and have a good time. Now for me, my small wave froth machine has to be the Lost Evil Twin. Uh, that twin fin setup is just great on those small days, fast, lively, and loose. And even in the most subpar conditions always leaves me with a smile. Uh, now the Groveler category has a lot of weight, uh, different boards to choose from as all surfboard categories do now. Uh, but things like the Lost Puddle Jumper HP or the Firewire Sweet Potato are another two other great options to choose from. Now also in the small wave kind of Groveler category, you could also put in mid-lengths, which should be a standalone category on its own, but obviously mid-lengths aren't for everyone. Um, but I'm gonna put it in kind of the small wave category for the moment, so that's mid-length surfboards. So there's a huge variety to choose from, whether you want single fins, thrusters, quads, or twin fins. So yeah, your small wave groveler is definitely one for a well-rounded quiver. Now the final category of board everyone should have for a well-rounded quiver is your step up or high performance board. And uh, now this is the board you're gonna be grabbing when things get a little bit punchier, a bit more critical, and you really want top performance under your feet. Uh, so boards like the Pizel Ghost or the DHD Sweet Spot 3.0, definitely great step up performance boards. Uh, for me, my performance boards and my step ups uh, fall into a slightly different category. My go-to is the uh, Broken Arrow by Cape Collective, uh, which is a mid-length performance twin fin. This is kind of acting like my step up board at the moment. So when things get a little bit bigger, a little bit more hollow, that's the board I'm grabbing. And some performance mid-lengths can really fit into this category quite nicely. Uh, the Firewire Seaside and Beyond is another example of that as well. Uh, when it comes to shortboards though, my kind of high performance shortboard has to be the Album Twinsman. Admittedly, mainly when I'm going left because I'm not very good on twin fins on my backhand, but that thing can handle some serious size and hollow conditions. So yeah, if you want to round off your surfboard quiver, a high performance board or step up is another great one to add. And there you have it guys, that's my full rundown of my personal quiver and the three types of board you need in yours. Now if you have any questions about any of the boards I've mentioned, any of the categories or any kind of surfing questions in general, make sure you add them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. 
that's it for this week guys make sure you like comment subscribe and i'll see you next week